Thanks for being our, our final act of the day. We really appreciate it. Am I between people and the beverages? Yeah, the, best, make this the quick. best slot. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks, everyone, for sticking around for our, yeah. our final act here. Monover, my first question for you might seem like a little bit of a softball, but I actually am really curious about this. I'm, I'm yeah. not quite sure what this means. So you are the VP of Enterprise Computing at NVIDIA, but can you describe what, what that, that actually what means? That actually means? Like what, <laughs> what, 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 what parts of the business do you run, and what are, what are you focused on right now? Yeah, I'll tell you, the thing about uh, NVIDIA, uh, when you work for Jensen, uh, as I do, of course, I'm responsible for some products and things. We have a system called DGX, which is the hardware that uh, server that we produce, really the supercomputer of AI. So that's, that's something I work on. I work on our Gen AI software uh, with folks like Carrie Brisky, who was here this morning, you know, talking about some of our work. But really, when you work for Jensen and NVIDIA, we're a mission-driven company. And so your real job is there's a mission that you are, you are focused on. And the mission that I've been focused on in NVIDIA for almost five years now is the democratization of AI for enterprise companies. And we believed for many years that every enterprise company can benefit from AI. And so we started that journey one vertical at a time. And of course, everything flipped on its head a little more than a year ago. And there's a universal use case now called generative AI. And so I spend a lot of my time uh, figuring out how to get uh, practical generative AI uh, at every enterprise company. And that's why, for example, we love working with you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and so we had, this, we had this announcement this morning about our integration with NVIDIA, um, NIM, and, yeah. and we're really excited about it. Obviously, NVIDIA is incredibly um, excited about it. But before we go into NIM, could you describe for the audience what, what NIM actually is? Yeah, I think it's, it's good to take a little bit of a step back, right? So I think you know uh, most people in the audience here, I'm sure, would appreciate that uh, you know the real shift that's happened in AI. I would say the last few years is uh, in the era when it was all about predictive AI. You know the era that that you did so much work in with your company. Uh, the it was basically the data scientist, right? Because AI is a data science problem. Because you got to think about uh, what model architecture should I have? Where do I find my data? How do I go through the process of training my model and tuning it in different ways and uh, running all my experiments and keeping track of all of that, right? Uh, but I think the opportunity that generative AI really has opened is to move it from data science to application development. And so now this is the new kind of enterprise application, right? Where it used to be, like I grew up in India, okay? And when I grew up in India uh, way back when, too long ago, um, Every, in every city block, there'd be at least one kiosk that would say, come and learn SQL programming for a month and you can get a job as an enterprise application developer because you, you'll write your C++ and you'll embed some SQL queries in it, right? And you've got an enterprise app. And you go to a big bank like, uh, you know, like if you look at Citibank, Citibank actually has more software engineers on the payroll than NVIDIA's entire workforce. Right, and that's just one bank, right? So there's every one of these companies has thousands, tens of thousands of applications that are doing different pieces of work across the company. And so the question is, what is that new application going to be? Well, we all now know, right? It's going to be some kind of copilot, some kind of chatbot, some kind of application that's using LLMs or multimodal models along the way, right? And that is not a data science activity now, that is an application development activity. Right? So what we've been thinking about for the last couple of years at NVIDIA is how does this shift happen and how do you make this shift happen? And so the answer is really, of course we know how to do training, but these models are gonna be used. They're going to be, you're gonna do inference on the models. And so you need to give developers the right construct, the right artifact that they can use to actually consume a model and to embed it in the applications. And so that's really why we came up with the idea of NIMS. And think of it this way, right? If you're uh, all those people writing applications and, and writing SQL queries, was any of them sitting there implementing a query engine, a database query optimizer? No, right? Think about anybody building a web application. Are they sitting there re-implementing Linux? No, you just, there are certain things you let other people do 
because it's at a certain level you take a dependency. And so as NVIDIA, our approach was, listen, uh, we're not here to build all the AI applications in the world. We can never do that. But we know a thing or two about GPUs. You know, we kind of work on them a little bit. We have one or two engineers working on GPUs. And we kind of design them ourselves. And we're actually a very big practitioner of AI ourselves, right? We do a lot of AI training and inference ourselves. So over the years, we've had this philosophy for accelerated computing, which is like full stack, that you can design the hardware and the software together, right? Transformers became a big thing, right, for LLMs. And so, of course, we adapted our hardware to add the right uh, things into the hardware to make it really good, uh, good for LLMs. So we just felt that, you know, uh, it would be entirely natural for us to say, we understand the landscape of GPUs, right? Whether it's an H100 or an A100 or an L40 or a small GPU on a laptop. Uh, this is our install base. We have a lot of GPUs out there. We've designed them. We know what LLMs need. And so we're the ones who would be well suited to produce the engines, the runtime, to actually run the model regardless of which GPU you're running it on, which cloud you're running it in, whose server you're running it on. And so what we came up with was this construct that says, let's put all of this into a container, let's abstract it with an API so that it's really easy for developers to use, and you don't worry about, hey, what's the latest and greatest and fastest and most secure way to run the next favorite model on the next favorite platform, right? So kind of what we're doing is, at NVIDIA, we've got this factory, if you will, where we do this cross product, okay? Models, models from Meta, obviously today's a great day to talk about models from Meta, but models from anywhere, uh, open source models, proprietary models on the one hand, and then the places you can run them on, the other hand, and that cross product, produce all the right engines, optimized engines, in the same consistent package, where the API is always the same, it runs the same way, and that construct, which is essentially a container, is what we call a NIM, right? And so we have NIMs for all the different models, and what we see as our role at NVIDIA is, let us provide those NIMs, and then everybody can do the work on top of that, right? Uh, one question I get asked a lot, Lucas, is, so are you an app store? Are you suddenly, are you the distributor of, of models or whatever? And what I say back is, no. We are not, that's not the point of name. We are not a distributor. We are producing the distributable artifact that all the distributors can distribute, right? We are very, very clear at NVIDIA. We are a platform company. We build an ecosystem. We are not here to be the ecosystem, right? We are just building the lowest level building blocks that everybody can build upon uh, to, to reach customers, right? So, hey, we used to do GPUs, now we do GPUs and NIMs. So, if I wanted to use a NIM, would I go to NVIDIA for that, or would I build my own? Uh, so that's a great question, right? So, so, you know, we already talked about the cross product, uh, which is challenging enough to begin with, even if you just take the base foundation models and and all the different GPUs. And we've invested a lot of money in this factory that allows us to do that cross product just for the base models. Uh, so that's kind of what we do, okay? But I think uh, where things get more interesting is for any of you who built a rag, right? I mean, let's just talk about this for a second. Why is this whole thing suddenly interesting? It's interesting because, uh, you know, if in the world before rags, your LLM had to be really, really amazing for it to be useful in some way. But the beautiful thing about RAGS is that because you're essentially doing a semantic search on data that you already had in your enterprise, and you're getting you know, the, the bulk of the information from that semantic search, from the vector search, you're really using the LLM to feed all of that as a prompt, as a context, and let the LLM do its work. And so because of that, I think there's been this democratization where a lot of these LLMs you see in the ecosystem are actually pretty good. Uh, but when you go through that experience of building a RAG, as, you know, as we have done at, at NVIDIA, we have a couple hundred of them that we use internally now, you find you go through this two-step process where you build your RAG and it works pretty well, and then you get to the point where you say, I actually have to fine-tune my model you know, to get really 
uh, a productive uh, chatbot out of this. And so now the question is, if I'm fine tuning my model, if I've got my own models, if I'm a company that has you know, a fleet of models that I'm using for different purposes, customized for, for different tasks, where are the NIMS coming from, right? Because NVIDIA is not producing the NIMS for all those models. We're just producing the NIMS for a good set of base models. And I think that's, uh, that's what uh, Carrie and Chris were talking about this morning, right? Which is how do we give customers a way to sort of live in this world of NIMS? That, okay, I chose a model. Maybe I chose Llama 37B, right? And that's what I start with. And now for my finance team, I have a certain custom version of it. For my HR team, I have a chatbot, I have a different custom version of it. How do I run all of those as NIMS, right? What's my NIM factory for my company? Uh, and I think the thing that, that you've just put out in preview is, um, uh, you know, is, a, is a very good example of that. And uh, you know, I, I can tell you personally, uh, we have a lot of people at NVIDIA using weights and biases to do our own work. So I would hope that all the other people out there who use weights and biases would take advantage of that and, and you know, use your platform as a way of producing these, these NIMs, yeah. Well, thanks. Um, I guess just to make sure I, I really understand this, so you know I can, um, you know these days I can I can open my laptop and I can with O Llama or Llama CPP or other programs I can, you know I can run these LLMs on my on my laptop. What's what's the advantage that I get as like an enterprise to using this packaged NIM versus just running yeah. the model without it? I think there's two things, right? Um, performance and security. Those would be the two things I would think about the most, right? So, you know, for years in the world of training, uh, what we were doing at NVIDIA was because we were training large models ourselves all the time and we had these massive clusters. You might have heard of Celine, for example, as a cluster. What we would say to people is, we are constantly updating our software every night, right? We're making more efficient, more performant, and if you adopt the same architecture that we have, you're just gonna get those improvements automatically. So the first thing is, now we have exactly the same thing going on for inference. So, you know, we have a person at NVIDIA, his name is Jonah Albin. He's been at NVIDIA for forever. You know, he designed our GPUs way back when. And what does he and a couple thousand of his friends do every day now at NVIDIA? Uh, they work on NIMS. And they're constantly optimizing the runtime for every one of these models and all the latest techniques, you know, and different kinds of batching and all these things. And so, as a developer in an enterprise, if I've chosen to run the model through a NIM, then I'm just gonna get those improvements automatically by just updating to the latest NIM for that model, right? So you just, you sort of outsource that, right? And you know you're always getting the best performance you could possibly get, which in this world means what? The best performance means you need the least amount of GPUs in order to do the same workload. So yes, I'm putting myself out of business, but that's, I think, the right thing to do, right? Because there's so much, uh, so much use case. So I think that's, that's the one thing, right? Uh, the second thing is, uh, there's a lot of software in the runtime that you need that's actually hosting a mod, right? And uh, how do you take care of the security patches, you know, and, and, and all your CVEs that, that keep coming up, et cetera? So again, we've got a whole army of people at NVIDIA who are doing this all the time. So it's like an enterprise grade way of uh, picking a model and running your model, right? So you don't worry about those things, you just update to the new name and you just work on, on your application. So I think, um, I think that's, that's, uh, that's a pretty good way of thinking about it. Thank yeah. you. Um, well, this might be a funny question to ask in, in public, but I'll do it. You know, yeah. um, we've really appreciated the, the partnership with NVIDIA, sincerely. I mean, you know, you guys started working with us when we were a tiny company, and it, yeah. it wasn't, you know, clear that we were going to have a big audience for you, and, and you've been, you know, supportive from the very beginning. When you think into the future, working with weights and biases, maybe we come back here a year from now at our, at our next... Oh, so you're going to invite me back? Oh, well, okay. hopefully we'll invite you back. Yeah. I think so. Uh, <laughs> will you come? And I guess if you came back next year, what would you, what, where would you hope that the partnership had gone? So I think the, the way I'd answer that is, I would say, where's the industry at right now? I, I think most companies that I talk to nowadays have got some number of chatbots. Everybody's gone through the phase of experimentation, okay? They've all started building their stuff. 
In most cases, what do you do? You call into OpenAI APIs. That's kind of how you begin, right? They've got some number of, of rags. Um, and I think they're, they're, they're all sort of on the cusp of putting that into production, if you will. And production doesn't have to mean for my customer. Production means like internally, right? My HR team is actually using this chatbot to understand what's going on with the workforce. My PR team is actually using the chatbot to help write the next press release, what have you, right? And so what I would hope, Lucas, is that we're here from now and we're talking about a long list of customers who have actually now put Gen AI in production in that fashion because they used your platform. And of course they use NIMS and of course they ran on GPUs and they're running on GPUs. So I think that's what we can all, uh, we can all hope for. Um, and I think we need, we need an agile platform because the, what we think of as the state of the art techniques today, I mean, we're gonna be laughing at that stuff a year from now, right? So uh, uh, yeah. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much, Marvir. No, it was my pleasure. pleasure. Should we let these people go have yeah, some Yeah, let's let them go. Thank you very much.